Hopefully you've heard about Google Notebook LM. I think it's one of the biggest technologies of 2025. Whenever I present it at conferences, the reaction is incredible. Basically, what it does is it helps you to study and prepare for anything. So it's ideal for teachers and ideal for students. So for example, if you've got some PDFs and some YouTube videos and some documents and some websites all around one topic, you put them into Notebook LM and then it will produce lots of study materials for you so that you can learn all of that content very quickly and it means you don't have to read through it all. It will generate a video summary it will generate an audio summary it will generate quizzes for you to check your understanding it will generate for you flashcards it will generate infographics it will generate reports etc from the point of view of students studying preparing for exams or people like myself who do lots of presentations or need to write articles or need to basically prepare to write a report or something this technology is exceptional and it's free. I'm going to take you through this technology as quickly and as clearly as I really can. I really hope you like the video and as always if you do please like it, please share it, please comment on it and of course join me on my YouTube channel. Let's get started. Make sure you make use of the menu system so if you want to jump to any part of the video just click on that part of the menu and then you'll be able to see that section. First of all, let's grab Notebook LM. It's one of your apps, you'll find it here. If you go over to your apps on your Gmail account, then you've got Notebook LM here. Now let me quickly explain what Notebook LM is. It's basically like working with ChatGPT, but you are controlling where the sources come from. So if I take an example here, and I've got this one here of weaving extensive reading into language learning, then what you've basically got here is I've uploaded a whole series of documents related to the topic of extensive reading. Some of these could be articles, some of them could be blog posts, they could be audio files, they could be uh, YouTube videos, they could be Google documents. I've got a whole series of different documents here that I've uploaded. And now I can chat to those documents and ask any questions. And it's not going off onto the internet but it's rather pulling out the answers from these documents. So if you want to prepare a topic and you don't know, or you want to basically get the right information around that topic or revise for an exam or prepare, for example, a PowerPoint presentation, this is an ideal way because you can grab all the content together and then quickly generate the answers that you want. However, that is just the start and this is very powerful and I will demonstrate it in a minute. But not only can you generate answers to all the questions based on this content, but you can also do, for example, an audio overview, a video overview, a report, a mind map, a set of flashcards, generate a quiz, generate an infographic and even a set of slides. And again, it's all based on the content that you have uploaded. Now the other thing is, if you don't have the content available to you, let's say you've got a topic that you wanna study but you don't have a lot of articles or YouTube videos, you can actually use the AI within Notebook LM as a way of helping you to search for material that you might be interested in. Let's start to look at this tool in action now. Remember, this chat is based on all of this content. And if I asked a, a, a question, for example, what are the four key strands of language learning? And then I simply just put that in and clicked here. It will pull the answer to that question from this content. So obviously it's very important that the content is all based around the same kind of topic uh, so that it can then look to the content and pull out the answer. Okay, and I've got that answer there. I'm gonna, so if I click back here and just start a new one, 
And if you start a new one, notice that you've got the option here of uploading files, taking links from YouTube, pasting in text, grabbing stuff from your Google Drive. I'm going to click on Choose File or Files. I'm going to go to my documents as I know I have some research articles on the topic of screencast technology and using it for feedback. I'm going to select all of those, click on open, and now it's going to bring in those five sources. Now I could extend that by looking on the internet if I wanted to look for more, but if I'm happy with these sources and these are the sources I want to work with, now I could begin to use this chat window now and talk to these five sources. Okay, so you've seen now what a Notebook LM is. You've seen also how to basically set one up. Let's start to look at generating the content and we'll start with perhaps one of the most impressive features, which is the audio. Don't forget if the video is useful, please like it. Not long ago, I had to do a presentation about multimodal learning. I uploaded about 15 different sources of content and the first thing I did was simply to get an audio overview based on this information, based on all the sources that I provided. And the reason for that is that meant I didn't have to read anything. I could be walking around the house just listening to that audio overview to give me a general idea and give me some ideas for my presentation. So if we click on this button here, and I just want to point out, you can be very specific with these audio overviews. So I can just click on this button here and it's going to generate one, but I can click here and be very specific specific about that audio overview. Now I find myself using these buttons more and more depending on what I'm planning on doing. Notice that I can also do this in other languages which is fantastic for language learners. I want to do a brief bite-sized overview to help grasp the core ideas. I'm going to choose this option. Now notice I can even be even more specific down here. I might say I want to focus only on Paul Nation's work around reading or whatever. So I can be very specific about what I want the audio podcast to be about. And I'm going to click on this button here now, and it's going to generate that podcast for me. Now, this is a really powerful tool, both for teachers and students, particularly, for example, students preparing for their exams in the sixth form, uh, researching subjects, research group work, projects, etc. This could be an incredibly powerful tool. I can't emphasize how much I'm making use of this tool when I've got to prepare something. So let's click to listen to the audio. This is the brief on using video feedback to improve student writing performance. Okay, now this video is very short because, um, or sorry, video, this audio is very short because obviously I only ask for a brief summary. If you was asking, for example, a debate or a critique, it's gonna be a lot longer. Notice also that you can control whether it's short, default, or long. So the detail that it's gonna go into, and obviously the format will depend a lot on the choices you make here. I have been very impressed with these audio summaries, particularly if I get it to do the debate one because I've got two people discussing the topic and I find that a really helpful format. Again, this is ideal for students. They're studying for for example, a history exam, they've got various sources around the Second World War, let's say, how the Second World War ended, and then they can generate all this content based on that content, on, on, on the resources that they've uploaded. Let's just look at some of the other options. Another very interesting one is the flashcards. This could be great for students, again, if they've got to study a certain amount of content. And I'm going to do standard default, and I'm going to make these medium difficulty. And it's going to generate questions. And if I just quickly, quickly click on the generate button and show you what will be generated uh, from the flashcards. So the flashcards have been generated, and if I click here, you can see that the flashcards, and I can actually use this button here to kind of move out wider, and it comes into the center of the screen. To close that down, then just click here. What is screencasting in the context of academic feedback? 
and then what you would do is to see the answer is to click on the back. So this can be a great revision tool. According to Mahoney et al, what are the three main formats of video for back, for, for uh, feedback? Okay, so it's gonna just talk about the different ways that it can be done. Okay, so we got the, the three uh, examples. So this can be very powerful. I've even used this for language learning. If I upload just one source, for example, nothing else but just one source, maybe a video that I've watched, then I can generate a quiz, and of course it will be questions all based on the content of that video. Now just a little thing to remember, if you turn off these sources, let's say for example, again, I'm just gonna click on, and imagine that we only wanna work with these two sources. Well, the same thing here, if I now generate an infographic, it will only based on the sources that I've selected. I hope the video is useful. We're gonna jump over now to focusing on generating video content. But just one thing, if you do like video and you like working with YouTube, there is another amazing free tool that I featured a lot this year. It's called TurboScribe and it extracts the transcripts from any YouTube video in any language and then also allows you to build content around that. And if you wanna watch that video, I'll put that on the screen now. So notice we can also make videos. If we click here, and again, you either click on this button and it will generate the video, or click on this button here, and notice you can have an explainer video or just a very quick brief. Notice again, you can generate it in multiple languages. And notice also that you have this kind of um, visual style choices. And I'm gonna choose classic. And again, down here you can be very specific. So let's say there's one thing that you really want to focus on you want the video to focus on that particular topic you can write that in um, i've never really played around with the level of the content but presumably could also give it tips on level etc and then you would click on generate and it's going to generate the video for you so let's look at that video we click here and we can play the video so if we play the video just for a few seconds all right, today we are talking about something that could totally change the game for how students... Now, obviously, as you go through the video, the images will change as you flick through to different parts of the video. And no, this isn't some talking head video. Okay, so you've got that option. Notice also that you can download the video as well. And I find these videos really useful because they actually get straight into the heart of the matter fairly quickly. Remember, of course, it does depend on what you ask for. You've got these options here, and that is quite important in terms of the content uh, that will be included in the video. And I'll just point out, of course, that we've got more content, and we are actually able to generate multiple pieces of content all at the same time. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on quiz, because you probably wanna see that. And again, I'll just leave it to the standard one, but you've got lots of options there. And I'm also gonna click on a slide deck and it will generate that as well. And again, I'm just gonna keep that to the standard and click on that. So you can actually get it to generate multiple sources of content. So let's have a look at a few of the things that we've generated. We've already generated here the quiz. I'm very impressed with the quizzes. When you get the quiz, you can click on this button here and, and it will open up onto the full screen. Now it's interactive, so you can click on your answer, okay? And then what you can do here is it gives you an, an explanation afterwards. Uh, and if you want more detail, you can click here and it's gonna give you basically where it got the answer from. This is really useful. I'm just gonna click on and do another question. And if I click here, then the same thing, it's gonna give me the answer well, that one I got right. But if I wanted to check, well, why did I get it right? I can click on this button here and it's gonna literally go to the source where that answer is. So I find this very, very useful and well laid out and organized. And just Really important, of course, when it comes to working with Google LM is how do you share it? And I'm gonna show you now exactly what options we've got in terms of sharing the content with our students. Now you can share any Google Notebook LM that you create with your students and they will have access to it in very much the same way that you've got access and they will also be able to chat with the sources. To do that, just click on the share button here 
And the best way to work is to click on anyone with the link and then full notebook. Now it is also possible, but remember once you've done that, click on copy link and that way you could share the link with the, with the students. If you've got the students email addresses, you can also send it to them by putting in their email addresses here and just sending. Another option is that you share this uh, Google, this notebook LM with the students, but you only give them access to the chat. Okay, so in that case, if you did that and copied the link and then save, they would only be able to access this. They wouldn't have access to all this additional content. But it is important to remember that your students do need to have a Gmail account. This isn't like, for example, Google Docs, which you can share with people who haven't got an account. When it comes to this technology, you do need to have an account to access anything that's being shared with you. Okay, I really hope you liked that video. And if you did, then please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos. Look at all the different menu items at the top of the screen here. If you're a teacher and you want to keep up a little bit more with the work I do, we often organize webinars, online courses, etc. Then sign up to the newsletter. And if you sign up to the newsletter, there is a free 14 part mini video course in using technology in language teaching and nearly everything I suggest is free. If you want to take it a little bit further then think about joining me on Patreon. If you join Patreon you get uh, extra videos every month with no advertising. I just go straight into the training. Lots of ideas about how you can use the technologies in the class with your students and you also get the chance to meet me online once a month for some direct training and that's a real opportunity for you to practice using the technologies with me and finally if you want to go even further uh, join me on my very popular course technologies and approaches to blended hybrid and online teaching i do that in collaboration with nile that is the norwich institute for language education a very prestigious organization in the uk and that course has been running for many years and is very popular. Thank you very much. I'm going to leave a few more videos on the screen now that you might find useful.